maintenance payments are very important in reducing child poverty, um, as the Honourable Member for Newbury mentioned. And it has been estimated that as many as one in five single parent families on benefits are lifted out of poverty by receiving child maintenance payments, which is a very important point to, for us to consider today. So not only do we support the principle, we also recognise the enforcement of child maintenance obligations does need to be improved. Enforcement action was affected by the pandemic. CMS staff were redeployed to mention the surge in universal credit claims, and indeed the courts were closed. The number of liability orders in process fell from 6,900 in March 2020 to 2,400 in September 2020, obviously a very considerable drop. But since 2020, there has only been a partial recovery, um, and the most recent figures for June 2022 are not only far lower than before the pandemic at 4,200, they are lower than in June 2021 by over 1,000 cases, so quite clearly there are some very serious issues faced by the CMA. The number of enforcement agency referrals now in process is less than half what it was before the pandemic. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, the system for ensuring that child maintenance is paid does need to be efficient and fair, and we do need to address these points and discuss them thoroughly in this House. Um, I thank the Honourable Gentleman opposite for, for raising concerns regarding backlogs. The um, CMS is committed to delivering uh, service of the highest standards and has been recognised by the Customer Service Accreditation and independent uh, validation of its achievement. And they do respond quickly uh, to parents using the service. In the quarter ending uh, June 2022, 84 per cent of changes in circumstances had been actually in 28 days. And I would say to parents, as we heard from the member from Devizes, if something has changed, do let the CMS know. Call handling has also been improved with calls directed to the most appropriate person to deal with. 